Hi. Good morning, everyone. I'm so happy to see all of you here together with us uh, at the AgriVest 2015. I'm Nitsa Kardish, CEO of Trendlines Actec, and probably the most proud and happy person in this hall. Last time I felt like that, it was in my son's bar mitzvah. So <laughs> um, uh, we had uh, high expectations and hope when we first initiated AgriVest in 2012. For me, it is so exciting to see what this event um, turning into. We have grown from almost 100 people to um, 350 here today. So don't you think it's amazing for us? Thank you for being here, and thank you for taking part in that. So for me, um, all of you are our partners in fulfilling the mission, and the mission is challenging. So I'm very happy to welcome our uh, many guests from abroad and our um, colleagues, and uh, together with the growing community, the local community growing year by year. And we can see here entrepreneurs and investors, we can see here um, farmers and researchers, and also uh, government and, uh, representative from the government. So together with Green Soil Investment and the Ministry of Economy, we initiated a, an event that is not only an integral part of the uh, Israeli agri-tech landscape, but uh, uh, may well have the power to influence the future of the agriculture. I personally believe in that. So now it is my great pleasure to invite my partner, Mr. Odedi Stahl, Director of Invest in Israel, the Ministry of Economy, to welcome us all and uh, to open the conference. Thank you, Odell. Thank you, Nitsa. Uh, I would like to challenge you because I'm also very excited. <laughs> so we have to, uh, to compare notes. Uh, good morning, everybody. Truly, it's a very uh, special uh, moment to open uh, this uh, wonderful uh, conference. Uh, Nitsa mentioned the uh, AgriVest uh, uh, 2012, yeah. right, which was the first one that we did. Uh, it was in uh, Mikve Israel, the first agricultural school in Israel, and we held the conference there. It was wonderful. Uh, but now we are in Mahon Weizmann, which is uh, probably one of the most prestigious institutes, research institutes globally. So we went from high school to the academia and still moving forward. So congratulations on the, uh, on the location. And again, welcome to all our guests from abroad and obviously to the Israeli participants. We live in a, a very interesting times, times of uh, rapid and uh, dramatic changes, basically in almost every aspect of our life, in healthcare, infrastructure, energy, agricultural, food, financial, basically everything. Rapid and dramatic change is not something that most people like too much. We tend not to be too fond of rapid and dramatic changes, and there is a, a Chinese phrase that say that may you live in an interesting time. And I know that there are a lot of uh, Chinese guests here in the room, so probably they are familiar with that. Now this phrase usually you don't tell to the people that you like. It's kind of a bless with a twist inside. Bottom line of it is the fact that changes is something that usually people tend to move away from. The outcome of it is usually that when we have to take decisions, we stick to the business as usual scenario. Because we don't like that much changes. Now when you stick to the business as usual scenario, 
it's not always that good. And it is relevant to people, to organizations, to companies, even to states. And uh, just two examples of companies that stick to the business as usual scenario. Nokia, Kodak, brilliant companies that just didn't see where the market goes, didn't realize that business as usual is no longer an option. And I think agrotechnology is, of course, it's not ICT. And probably uh, the, the rhythm, the tempo, the speed is definitely not the same. Nevertheless, the directions, the vectors are the same. So I'm sure that even though agrotechnology is relatively slow adapter of changes, it is a sector that is moving forward, and this is one great example. The agrivest of a couple of years ago, the one today, and I'm sure future to come, we're going to have a larger and larger hall in order to host everybody. So. Uh, uh, Basically, a lot of drivers force us to change. Issues like uh, uh, climate change, uh, growing population, etc., etc. For all those good reasons, we must change and do things differently than the way we used to do. It has to do with uh, precise irrigation and different uh, methods of uh, cultivating the land, new, new seeds, uh, logistics, etc., etc. It's all over the place. The challenge that I see ahead of us is for all this community to work together, being the entrepreneurs, the investors, the regulators, the policy makers, governments, the market, etc. Everybody has to see that basically we share sh the same vision and we have the same goals and try to work together. Going back to the beginning of my uh, speech about the change, it's not an easy task, changing the concept, the mindset of people and the mindset of decision makers. But there's no other way. Simply as that, there's no other way. Israel. Israel was, is, and most probably continue to be an incredible source of breakthroughs and innovative technologies in various sectors, and agrotechnology is definitely one of the leading ones. I'm sure we're gonna see here today brilliant uh, presentations. I know part of the, some of the companies, uh, uh, great technologies that basically each and every one of them is a game changer in its field. So I'm sure we're gonna have a lot of uh, uh, interesting presentations. Actually, I uh, saw, you know, I went aside a little bit during the coffee at the beginning of the day, and it was wonderful to see people interacting with one another. So I'm sure the uh, coffee breaks and lunch is going to be extremely busy as well. And actually, Nitsa and myself are gonna meet you again at the end of the day on this stage giving the awards to the winning companies. So thank you very much, and I wish all of us an extremely interesting day. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Steve Rhodes. I'm the chairman and CEO, co-chairman and CEO of the Trendlines Group. And uh, Nietzsche asked me to say good morning to you, so I'm gonna do that, but I'm gonna do it really shortly, briefly, because I know that the, the main event is still to come, and I don't wanna put everyone to sleep before we get to the exciting part of the companies. What I did want to do was share with you for a couple of minutes what gets us excited about agritech and also what worries us and scares us about agritech. You know, Andy Grove, the legendary CEO of Intel, wrote a, a best-selling book, Only the Paranoid Survive, and I think that in our business we not only have to be optimistic all the time but also paranoid, and so I will share with you a little bit of my paranoia as well. It's a great time um, to be an agritech investor. It really is an amazing time and we're very excited to be in this business. Just three weeks ago, the Wall Street Journal, which I suspect 
10 years ago hadn't heard of agriculture except to report on the uh, commodities prices, had an article, a lead article entitled Silicon Valley from Plant Roots, Silicon, Silicon Valley Firms Plant Roots in Farm Belt. VC investments, according to the journal, increased last year by 54% in agriculture and food investments to $486 million. And while it's not a big number compared to what they're investing in IT, a 54% increase is tremendous. Similarly, according to Rob LeClerc and Ag Funder, the total investment in 2014 reached almost $2.4 billion in 264 distinct agritech and food deals. So there's a lot going on. The market is really starting to wake up and, and take a, and make take uh, re realize the opportunity here. In fact, some of the big brand name investors in Silicon Valley are starting to look at this field seriously and make investments. Names like Andreessen Horowitz, Google Ventures, Kleiner Perkins, Sequoia, Goldman Sachs, and Draper Fisher all made investments in agritech last year. And again, go back five years ago, it was an area that they didn't even look at. So as you'll hear today, the opportunities for agritech investors abound. And so it's a very exciting time for us. And Israel is probably the best place in the world to be doing what we do, looking at agritech investments. We have over 300 uh, research groups here in Israel doing R&D in the agritech space. That's amazing. We're a country of only 8 million people. So there couldn't be a better place to be, right? Right. Except that we lose sleep all the time. And, and I wanted to share with you what worries me about this space. Despite the increased activity, in early stage investment uh, capital is still very challenging. It's still very difficult for young agritech companies to raise capital, especially here in Israel. Our mission at Trendlines is to establish and uh, build companies that will improve the human condition. And so we only invest in two areas, medical device technology and agriculture and food technologies. We actually start the companies we invest in and it's a great place for us because we see hundreds of deals a year, exciting opportunities, and we select the best of them to invest in. We then invest, build those companies out, but after we've built them out, we need to raise follow-on capital. And we lose sleep worrying about where are we gonna get that follow-on capital. Last year, actually, six out of six of our agritech companies succeeded in raising follow-on capital, which sounds great, but it's a tremendous amount of work. And not only is it a tremendous amount of work, but most of those raises were small angel-led raises that enabled the companies to survive and progress, but slowly and not really at the pace that they deserve to and need to progress. So we worry there's insufficient venture capital for early stage opportunities. And the result is that companies progress slowly. They spend too much time trying to raise capital and in some cases they don't succeed at all. Certainly, there's a lot more going on in Israel today than there was three years ago when we got started. Our partners, Green Soil, are a great example of what's going on uh, in, um, in the agritech investment space here in Israel today. Green Soil has been very active, and you'll hear more, I hope, from uh, Gidon when he comes up to the stage to talk about uh, uh, the investment scene and the future of agritech here in Israel. It's great that they're there, and it's great that they're active, but we need more Green Soils. There are a couple more funds either looking at or starting up, but that's about it. So, so what's the solution? Well, I don't really have any magic bullets. Certainly, this conference and trend lines is a part of the solution. We make capital available today at the very earliest stage and we provide support for young companies. But there's a lot more that needs to be done way beyond what we're doing. Certainly, government is a part of the solution and should be a bigger part of the solution going forward both the Office of the Chief Scientist, the Bird Foundation, as well as the Ministry of Agriculture have been great supporters, but there, I think there's a lot more that can be done from those agencies, not only in terms of funding, but also in terms of understanding this marketplace and the importance of it. The international venture community, which is represented here today, I think should be an important part of the solution. There are almost 20 countries represented here today, and that's amazing to me. Oded mentioned our first conference three years ago, where about 150 people, about half the group that's here today, crammed into a small room at Mikveh Yisrael. And I think maybe we had one American there and a couple of Chinese investors, and, and that was about it. So today, having people from almost 20 countries around the world is very exciting for us. And just like the international venture community has discovered Israeli IT for years now, 
We think that they're going to be establishing uh, beachheads here and investing for many years to come, looking at the opportunities. Finally, local venture should join the opportunity. And here, um, you know, I wish that there were more local funds here today that aren't in the ag space, looking at it and learning about it. And we have an important mission, I think, to train them and to teach them about the opportunities. So it's a great time on the one hand to be an ag tech investor. Uh, we decided that four years ago and I think it's proving out. The sector is growing rapidly. It's raising a lot more money today than it did two or three years ago. I think we're reaching a tipping point. Um, this is the third AgriVest. Uh, each one has been bigger than the previous one and has had more international representation and that's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Israeli ag tech is on the map finally. We've had uh, more exits in the last few years than ever before in the ag space and I think that the pace of those exits will continue. So there's never been a better time to look at uh, agritech investing in Israel and that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna look at 12 exciting young companies and what they're doing. We're gonna hear from a company that won our best company award at the last agritech uh, event and hear how they're doing. We're gonna talk about the ecosystem and building it and what we're doing, to, what you're gonna hear today is only the tip of the iceberg in terms of the many great opportunities. I know that Nitsa, during the course of her um, remarks today, is going to thank our partners and sponsors, so I won't bore you with that uh, at the moment. Um, what I did want to do is to thank Nitsa personally. Thank you very much. <laughs> this, th this conference was really the vision of, uh, of Nitsa who three and a half, four years ago came to me and said, you know, we really need to do something to help jumpstart the ecosystem for agritech investing here in Israel, and that's how AgriVest was born. I also want to thank uh, the amazing team that works with Nitsa at, at Trendlines AgTech. Thank you to all of the team, and thank you to the entire Trendlines team. team. <laughs> and having made my thank yous, I will let you get on with the important stuff. So thanks very much. Enjoy and uh, we hope to see you again here at the next AgriVest. Thank you.